Okay, hi YouTube. Um, Catherine Michelle here, and I want to preface this by saying um, this is probably not appropriate for everyone. So if you're under the age of 18, squeamish, or don't like to hear um, reports or um, interpretations or ideas or thoughts about autopsies, you know, now would be a good time just to turn it off and don't watch. Okay, um, this is just going to be a preliminary um, examination of Rania Crowley's autopsy report. Just let's see if we can get it so you can see. So it's Rania, and I'm sure it's backward on your side, but however, um, this is what I'm going to be going through in my notes. Um, what this states here is I have found some, um, a couple of inconsistencies, or maybe just one on the most part, um, with uh, her report and and the gunshot wound to her head. Um, it says, you know, it gives the path. At the entrance, it says right parietal scalp, and the path is the right parietal bone with internal beveling, means this is where the entrance wound is, um, and fractures. So it goes through the bone, the dura, which are the coverings, through the brain itself, through the dura again, which there would be on the other side because, you know, you've got covering on that side as well, and then through the left temporal bone over here um, uh, with fractures. Of course, there are going to be fractures with a, gun, a gunshot wound. And it says the exit is the left post art. Ar oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sick right now. Left post -ar auricular scalp. It's been a while since I've done anatomy. So it might take me a second or two to get the uh, pronunciation correct, which would be roughly about behind the left ear. Um, now, that's the first projection. However, when you go down a little bit further, it says the trajectory is leftward, downward, and backward. Now, how they do that and come up with it coming behind the ear, I guess it could be possible, depending on what part of the parietal bone, because the parietal is pretty big bone, depending on where that could be. But to me, so far, and again, this is just a preliminary um, uh, uh, I've just been perusing. I haven't gone in and done a lot of in-depth yet, but I wanted to give you an update. So that could be an inconsistency or it might not be. But what I find to be inconsistent with this gunshot wound to the head is it states that, there, that the range is indeterminate. Yet, um, it states over here, sorry, that's my coffee pot going off. Um, Oh, what did I do with it? Okay. It says, um, this will be on page four of Renaya's autopsy report, um, under the heading called Gunshot Wound of the Head, Entrance. On the right parietal scalp, centered approximately two and a half inches below the top of the head, maybe somewhere around here, um, three and a quarter inches right of the anterior midline, anterior midline. <laughs> so this would be anterior front, posterior back. Um, and two and three quarters inches from the right external auditory meatus ear is a gunshot wound consisting of a 0.9 by 0.7 centimeter round defect. Now here's where I find the inconsistency. Um, the wound is surrounded by an, appro by an approximately, okay, bad grammar, by an approximately 0.5 centimeter wide faint circular impression. No evidence of soot, stippling, or unburned gunpowder particles is on the skin or bones surrounding the wound. Now here it clearly states that there is a faint circular impression. So that has to be the muzzle impression. It, nothing else makes sense. Yet on page one, it says it's of indeterminate range. Now if they have a faint impression of the gun muzzle on her head, they have a pretty good idea of to what that range is. Now, I'm not a gun expert and I don't know. However, it had to be close enough to leave an impression on the scalp. So there's an inconsistency there that I found. Um, I hope my tag came off. I don't wanna lose my tags. Um, let's see, there's uh, another thing that I wanna to bring to your attention that I'm going to be looking into further. Um, and this, to me, again, states that Renaya was killed last by whoever did this. Because underneath, um, I believe it's the same 
main title. Let's go back and check all of my the the report here. Um. Okay. <laughs> well, that has to be internal. That's not external. So, on page six of her report under gastrointestinal tract, it shows that um, the stomach contains approximately eight, 80 milliliters of thick tan material with partially digested food fragments. Now, when I went through uh, briefly scanning over Kamel's and David's, again, my last videos were just cursory. I, I looked at it. I um, saw a lot of stuff that didn't make sense and I looked at the photo and that's what those um, videos were about. This one I'm actually, my next videos are going to be going through these reports um, one report at a time and this right now again is just the cursory overview. Now this may or may not change however um, undigested food fragments were not found in either um, Kamel's or David's stomach. David's stomach was empty. However, Kamel's stomach did show um, the tan liquid as well, but everything else was digested. But as for um, Renaya's, there was still food in her stomach, undigested food. So, um, and then also another thing that we need to draw attention to would be, um, uh, this is under the external examination on page three as well. It says early to moderate de under, yes, first paragraph under external examination. It says early to moderate decomposition is evidenced by skin discoloration, marbling, blistering, slippage, and partial mummification of the face, left hand, and feet. Apparent canine scavenging is evidenced by absence of the right arm. To me, that is total assumption. They don't state anywhere in any of these reports that there are any visible signs of dog teeth marks anywhere. They said it's apparent canine scavenging and now the evidence of that is because her arm is missing. I don't agree with that at all. I think that was a lazy man's way out. Um, and then it states that the left sclera is white and the conjunctiva show no petechiae. So her left eye is fine. There's, it's white. The, the white parts of her eyes are white and no petechia would be the little dots, the, the broken blood vessels. So we know she wasn't strangled. Um, let's see. And it states here toward uh, the last paragraph on that, um, on that page, page three, last paragraph. The right arm is absent, a 10 by eight centimeter skin and soft tissue defect with jagged and tattered edges overlies the expo exposed glenoid fossa and lateral right first to fourth ribs. The lateral right third rib is fractured. So lateral, again, to give you um, um, anatomy, you know, where things are located, this would be midline. This is lateral. So off farther from the midline to the sides, that would be lateral midline. Posterior, uh, and, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Proximal and distal. Again, I'm not feeling well. I've been up for the last couple of nights. My grandson gave me his cold. So proximal is closest to when it's doing, you know, limbs and stuff like that. You have proximal closest to, distal farthest away, midline closest to the mid center of the body, lateral farther away. So when they're talking about that, there is um, the lateral right third rib is fractured. So you've got your first rib up underneath your collarbone, then you got your second and your third. So which would come probably right. So if you can imagine somewhere about close to in the area of the armpit or right underneath there is where that fracture of that rib is located. The first thing that popped into my head, and it's really funny because Dan asked the same question to the group, is I'm now picturing, I've always believed by reading these reports that her arm was taken from her body. And now after reading this in, in her report, it just solidifies to me that her arm was raised maybe a foot or something you know to put pressure on to try to rip that arm from her body um and the the rib is only fractured it's not completely broken which tells me that probably there was an initial cut this is what i'm saying that's why i think her arm was cut slash pulled um, because to pull, actually pull that arm from the body would take such tremendous force. Her rib would not just have been 
fractured, it would have been completely broken um, because it would have taken a lot of pressure for someone to put a foot there while they're pulling. Um, anyway, um, that is where I'm at right now with, with Renaya's um, report. Um, again, please understand this is just um, my initial thorough um, perusing of, of her autopsy reports. And I will be comparing these findings with what they state with her mom and dad's report as well as what the police reports state. But so far, um, <laughs> this, um, I, her, since her stomach had undigested food, David's stomach was empty. And it looked like maybe Kamel and mom were eating similar food products before their death. Um, David had not eaten at all. That just tells me, you know, David died first, then Kamel and Renaya was safe for last. At least that is how I am interpreting so far these reports. Um, again, if you guys find any other inconsistencies, I'm um, I'm going to do some more research about the gunshot entrance and exits. You know, um, maybe it can be downward, backward, but how it can go from a pride. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out because again, the parietal bone is really huge. The um, this this bone is is not the temporal skull is is not as large. So, um, we'll we'll keep this up and, and we'll keep looking, um, but it's 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 coming too. And I and I'm really grateful for everybody on the group who's again throwing out some really really good questions, and I hope to be talking to. Um, Dan and Greg, if they can find time, there's some other issues that um, I want to go with over them before I put it out on on YouTube or even mention anything on the, um, the, the page. So everybody keep looking and keep researching because we're all, everybody, even those who people who say they don't have much medical knowledge or even knowledge of how crime scenes go, they're everybody is starting to pick up on what is not right and um, conclusions are being drawn and pretty soon I'm you know I'm like I, I now see why Dan and Greg say this this case will be solved um, and again we may not actually have a name we may not be able to put a name but we will get enough information and enough proof to prove David didn't do this I mean again I will not back off from that I just I don't see any proof of him doing this crime at all. So stay tuned and hang in there. And if you have any questions, I will leave my email again down below. Feel free to write um, or go to Dan Hennon's page, uh, YouTube uh, channel and subscribe to him. And I think Greg also has a YouTube channel. It's Greg Fernandez Jr., Dan Hennon and um, subscribe to their channels as well and ask them questions and we'll get to the bottom of this.